Друзья, снова здравствуйте и надеюсь, вы не уходили далеко. Виктор Зуев, Петр Сальников и сегодня на Девгаме здесь на белых кибер диванах с нами Джонатан Блоу. Вы представляете себе, автор Брейд, автор Уитнес, автор вообще всего вот этого вот, э, за что многие из нас э, любят видеоигры. Э, и те, то, что самые игры как искусство, про которые очень любят э, всячески рассуждать. Э, Игровые журналисты, вот автор настоящих true indie игр про искусство, про философию, а, и не, не просто про э, геймплей и срубить бабла. Это Джонтон Блоу, друзья. Hello. Thanks. Hey. Thanks for joining us. So, uh, you're here with, uh, with a mission, or you're just uh, having fun at DevGum? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm giving a speech tomorrow. Uh, it's maybe a little bit more of a serious speech than people might expect, because... You know, we do video games. Sometimes uh, we don't think games are very serious sometimes, right? But uh, so We do. We yeah, do. well, yeah. <laughs> and especially making games is so hard that you find that the people who make games seriously, like, really care about the games and the technology and all of that. So it's a pretty serious speech tomorrow about uh, how maybe software in the world is uh, not in a very good place today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh you know in the in the old days um like video games was always the place where the people who were really pushing computers really hard would go right because that's what was fun that was what was exciting was when your computer could draw things that you'd never seen before or you know just do more or just even the ideas that we have for game designs they're very demanding it's very hard to make a game and so it always attracted people who solve very hard problems and maybe that is stopping to be true like i always used to think about software generally is kind of messed up but video games has the really smart people who <laughs> who will help fix everything later right um and i'm not sure that that's going to be true for much longer so yeah it's a serious talk uh how do you think will there um sometimes be a time where uh, making a game would be easy well it already is a lot easier today than it ever has been in history and there is some very good things about that it means more people could make games it means if you like to play games then there's more games to play because it's not so artificially uh limited um, by being hard to make um There are downsides to that, though. For example, a lot of games now, you try to play them and they don't work very well, right? You would think if they're easier to make, then they should work better. But it's not really what we see, right? Why? Well, it's because the people making them, maybe because they don't have to think very hard about the technical things, they just don't at all, right? And then you know, I'm not going to name any games, but we, we can all think of some that are in very bad states. Uh, so there's, as with everything, there's good sides to that and there's bad sides to that. So, uh, to me, uh, um, speaking of uh, those bad sides and good sides, to me th there's uh, like two types of video games, I mean in, in the sense of making them. Uh, one type is like you, you, you take a technology and then you go like for like a c conveyor uh production uh especially in the uh, triple a uh, titles and then we got games that require mm, uh, enlightenment and uh you cannot make games some games cannot be made uh fast uh but they still uh, <coughs> uh they still have uh, huge publishers which uh, you know provide uh, mm, specific um Ожидания, you know, uh, uh, publishers always wait for specific performance numbers and stuff like that. But uh, we know where uh, where the game is uh, a piece of art and a piece of uh, something else. Something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about that? And what what do you think about the 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 high competition uh, that uh, came to, uh, into the video games industry with uh, uh, such a freedom for? Well, pretty much everyone to create games, because you know your game can be not your yours literally, but uh, a talented uh, um, game uh, can be just uh, buried beneath uh, many other many titles. Many other yeah. titles, none, uh, many of them mm -hmm. not as good as uh, you know. Absolutely, I mean, 
we were just saying there's good sides and bad sides to everything, right? And a bad side to the current situation. You would think it's good that people have so many games to play, but a lot of them are bad, right? And if you make a new game, if you're a new game developer, especially who doesn't have a reputation, a track record that people know about, then people have no reason to look at your thing uh, above anybody else's thing. And if, if your thing is better, how will they know? They have to try it, and if they don't ever try it, even if some people try it and say it's better, that has to be very loud mm -hmm. to get above the noise, and often it doesn't happen. So I don't have an answer to that, really, um, except people making games just have to work harder. We always have to work hard, but we have to work even harder to make sure that people know that our thing is good and that they care that it's good. Um, and that's not easy. That's a weird thing because, uh, well, looking at the, the media world now, now that we have uh, uh, corporations like Disney with uh, so many franchises, the competition is very, very hot and uh, everyone is, um, it's a race. The, the video game industry has always been a race. If you do not uh, catch up, uh, you, you end up uh, behind everyone and just, you know, slowly your company disappears, nobody recalls your games and stuff like that. So uh, now the competition between uh, not only bad games and good games, but also inside the circle of uh, very, very expensive projects. Uh, and uh, I think the, the main problem is that the, the end user will, uh, I, I have I have like a couple of hours uh, in my uh, uh, after job in the evening. I have 15 minutes to watch a new Game of Thrones series, uh, another 15 minutes to watch a new uh, Marvel movie, another 15 minutes for that. And I, I, I cannot. How, how the hell do I choose what to do? Because you know the 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 media market is over overheated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like it it, it gets. Uh, Hotter and hotter. Mm. And you definitely have no time to search through hundreds of titles on Steam and other mm -hmm. digital stores. You have no time to search it. You just want uh, a great game right here, uh, right now. So many games. Yeah. Mm. Well, so you have to not be competing with the Marvel movie, right? Or with all those other games. And it's hard to figure out how to do that. Um, I know how I do it. Like I have my own personal style of what I like to design and, and what I like to make. Uh, but every developer needs to find their own style that has a reason to exist in the world, right? Like, let's take movies just as a simple example. If you're going to make a movie and you have not much budget compared to, you know, Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. And you just want to make a superhero movie and it's it's not it's not funny. It doesn't have an interesting angle. It's just a superhero movie with a low budget. Nobody is going to see that, right? Um, and then it's, it's funny because we have a uh, uh, director, Russian director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that makes what he exactly does? That. Makes exactly okay. that. So, <laughs> well, maybe if you have low aspirations for what you're trying yeah. to target, right? Um, so with games, it's like that. Uh, but of course, also there's competition across, like you're saying, right? People just are on the internet all day. They have many things they could do with their time. Games is just one thing. And in fact, games sometimes, because they take a lot of involvement, it could just feel like the thought of playing a game could feel like work. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, I could go play a game or I could go look on Twitter or something for 10 minutes. I'll do that, right? And so you have to give people really a reason and maybe this is just me talking about the things that I always talk about, but, you know, like a Marvel movie, it's not that serious of a thing. It's like, it's trying to be an exciting action story about a superhero, like saving the world from some new villain, right? And that's okay. Like people want to see that sometimes, but it's not going to change their life, right? They're not, they're, someone's not going, unless they're very young, they're not going to a Marvel movie, uh, to see something deeply meaningful, really, mm -hmm. right? And can we do that? Like, have we given up on the idea that we could make things that are deeply meaningful, or can we do that for people, right? If you can, if you can give people something, and they play that, and they say, oh, that was really, that made me think about some things that I haven't thought about ever in my life, or for years, that's, you know, 
that'll bring them back to the things that you make. Uh, that's one way to do it, right? And many people are not interested in that. Many people are just tired and they just want to watch the Marvel movie and go to sleep. But enough people care about that kind of thing that it's enough for a small to medium-sized developer to do very well, actually. And so that's the thing is you don't, don't try to be the same thing as the high budget thing. You want to be your own thing. And that's hard because when you look around, all the things that you see are the high budget things. Like when we were young and we get excited about games and we want to get into making games, the things that we see are probably, you know, Call of Duty or, or something, right? And so that makes us excited about making Call of Duty. <laughs> Our own version mm -hmm. that's better because it has this and that, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have this other thing. And that's a good place to start, but it's very hard to survive that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. and so you have to move from there to something else. So the key to success is uh, finding your uh, audience and shooting straight there, not tr trying not to be for, uh, for everyone, loved by everyone. Yeah, I mean, you know, those Marvel movies, I don't know what the budget is now, but they're $200 million. Yeah. Games have higher budgets sometimes. And they need to appeal to everybody, right? But I don't, because my company is really small. You know, when we make a game, actually our games take longer than AAA games sometimes. We just spent six and a half years on the first release of a game. Mm -hmm. um, but because, you know, we're actually pretty big for an independent developer. We're 14 people now. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't for that whole time, uh, but that's not that expensive, <laughs> you know, on, and, and the internet, the good thing about the internet is that it makes our stuff available to enough people that, that they can find it and we can keep going, you know, um, without mm -hmm. having to make something that everybody likes. Like the last game that we released, The Witness, is a really weird game. Very like, abstract. Yeah, like y you watch the video and you're like, I'm not sure why I would want to play this. It's just got some lines and whatever. And it was especially hard to talk about because the things that made the game really interesting were supposed to be surprises that the player finds while they're playing it. So we couldn't advertise those surprises or we ruin it for everybody. And so it was a very hard game to talk about. And despite all of that, uh, it did very well, you know, money wise and mm -hmm. were able to keep making games and that's great mm -hmm. so uh, maybe don't make a game as weird as that you know maybe maybe something halfway uh, but um, yeah lots of developers are doing great and surviving but also lots aren't it's just hard because yeah, there's so many you, you don't want to survive sometimes you just want to live and enjoy life <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah I know that too yeah so, uh, an interesting comment uh, from our uh, Twitch audience. Mm -hmm. So, there is a rumor that you prefer to stay while you're coding. To stand. To stand. To stand, 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 stand. So, I don't usually, actually. That There's some scenes of me doing that in Indie Game, the movie, which came out a long time ago. And I was experimenting with that at the time, but usually I sit down. Usually I move around a lot, like I'll just, you know, lean uh -huh. or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, standing was just uncomfortable. Okay. And it didn't help. So it's uh, so it's not true. Yeah. I did a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. a little bit. Uh -huh. It's like it's something special. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> why, the, why asking something like this? <laughs> so, uh, do we have uh, some more time? Art of Azd? Or maybe not. Victor? Yeah, so uh will you uh, I uh you will be uh, the the member of the judging panel. Am I right? Yeah, uh, tomorrow at the at the awards. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Okay. I should you, I should seen, figure that out. Have you seen the the short lists uh for the, for the awards or maybe lists for the game roast? Uh, I've been I've been working very hard on my speech, <laughs> so I've okay. only since I got here I've only been in the hotel room. I want to get around and see mm -hmm. some things today and definitely tomorrow. Still, but still haven't managed. It. Still haven't. No. Okay, okay. I just yeah. wanted to ask you about some you know impressions on the I, game. I haven't. I, I walked in from my hotel room and came in here to do this interview. Yeah. So, so that was great, and I think yeah. we yeah. Thanks right. very much. Yeah. See Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.